वेलकम टू माई चैनल कैमिकेट विद समीना सो लेट्स बिगिन चैप्टर नंबर वन एक्सपेरिमेंटल केमिस्ट्री 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 इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ साइंस दैट डील्स विद द स्टडी ऑफ मैटर इट इन्वॉल्व आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ सब्सटेंसेज इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ देयर प्रॉपर्टीज द वे दीज सब्सटेंसेज इंटरक्ट और कंबाइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म न्यू सब्सटेंसेज chemistry is based on experiments and experiments are done to test a hypothesis to explore examine and draw conclusions to get the scientific knowledge for performing experiments we need apparatus apparatus is the equipment instruments or tools needed to carry out an experiment here you can see the apparatus which you you can easily find in the chemistry laboratory The first one is the beaker. Beakers come in different sizes. Beakers are used to estimate volume of a given liquid when precision is not needed. We can just measure fixed volume of liquids. Second is conical flask. So conical flasks are used for mixing or heating solutions. Funnel Funnel is used to pour or transfer liquids from one vessel to another. And volumetric flask it's used to prepare solutions of exact concentrations. A measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinders are more accurate than beakers and are used to measure volume of liquid. Then next is burette. Burette is a long glass tube. uh with the tap on one side burettes accurately measure variable volumes of liquid from liquids from 0 to 50 cubic centimeter next one is pipette pipette also accurately measures fixed volumes of liquid example 10 cubic centimeter or 25 cubic centimeter A gas wrench is used to measure volume of a gas. It measures a maximum volume of 100 cubic centimeter. Now you can see a round bottom flask. See it has a spherical bottom. So these are mostly used when uniform heating is required. Then a gas jar. A gas jar is used to collect gases that are formed during the experiment. Wolf bottle is it's a vessel with two or three necks or outlets and are mostly used for washing or absorbing gases. An evaporating dish. Evaporating dish is used to evaporate liquids and to concentrate a dilute solution by heating it. Now, all right. So, as we perform experiments in science. we measure different physical quantities and each physical quantity has its particular unit like if i say 10 then 10 what so each quantity is expressed with its units like for example today we'll study about four physical quantities mass volume time and temperature and each physical quantity is expressed by its unit So the first one is mass. Mass is the quantity of matter in an object. The SI unit of mass is kilogram. Mass of an object can be measured by using beam balance which is the first one or electronic balance. An electronic balance is accurate and more precise and it's also easy to handle. Now if you see we can see that 1 gram is equal to 1000 mg and 1 kg is equal to 1000 g 1 ton is equal to 1000 kg now if you are asked to convert 20 g into kilograms how will you do it now you know that in order to convert gram into kilogram 
you must divide with 1000 and for converting kilogram into gram it has to be multiplied with 1000 so here we have to convert 20 gram into kilogram so for that what should we do yes we will we will divide 20 with 1000 so our answer will be 0 0.02 kilogram all right volume volume is the three dimensional space occupied by a substance the SI unit of volume is cubic meter other units are milliliters liters centimeter cube decimeter cube and the instruments that are used for measuring volume are pipette beaker burette conical flask volumetric flask and measuring cylinder again let's do a little conversion like converting 15 centimeter cube to decimeter cube how should we do it we can see that one decimeter cube is equal to thousand decimeter cube so that means that if we have to convert centimeter cube into decimeter cube then we should divide with thousand and in case if to have if we have to convert decimeter cube into centimeter cube then what should we do we will multiply the number with thousand so here we have to convert 15 centimeter cube into decimeter cube so we will divide 15 with thousand and your answer will be 0 0.015 decimeter cube next is time time is a measurable period during which an action or a process exists or it takes place the SI unit of time is second one hour is equal to 60 minutes so one minute is equal to 60 seconds then one hour would be equal to 60 multiplied by 60 that makes 3600 seconds and stopwatches are used to measure time temperature temperature is the measure of hotness or coldness of an object the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin but commonly we also use degree Celsius and in order to convert 25 degree Celsius into Kelvin what should we do we can get the temperature in Kelvin if we multiply the temperature that's given in Celsius scale and add that value with 3273 so your answer will be 25 plus 273 the answer would be 298 Kelvin so the apparatus which is used to measure temperature is thermometer we have two kinds of thermometers uh, an alcohol thermometer and a mercury thermometer so thermometers give you the temperature but when you have to read the temperature on the thermometer it should be vertical and not slanted and your eyes should be at the level of the meniscus now what is meniscus and how to read meniscus meniscus is the upward or the downward curve at the surface of the liquid the level of water is never never flat when uh, if you take it in a cylinder or burette it. it is always curved downwards and mercury always curves 
upwards because in mercury the cohesive or binding forces are very strong so meniscus curves upwards so while taking a reading check the correct position of the eye and read the bottom of the meniscus in case of water and if it is mercury then for mercury you have to read the upper meniscus all right now next is next topic is method of collection of gases as gases are also produced during the experiment for that we have to see two properties of gases number 1 so its solubility whether the gas is soluble in water or not and next is density so by solubility we mean that can the gas gas dissolve in water to make a solution or it is insoluble in water and by density we mean whether the gas is lighter than air or it's heavier than air and the apparatus that is mostly used for the collection of gases is a gas range and a gas jar in the gas range you can see the plunger this moves in the backward direction as the gas fills in the syringe gas jar you can see the gas jar that is also used for the collection of gases now there are three ways by which gases can be um collected so the first one is the upward delivery method or the gas can be collected by the downward displacement of air actually what happens that the gases which are less dense or lighter than air and they are insoluble in water so they move up they rise up all right and the gases which are denser than air they always move down all right they go from the tube and they move out as they are denser so they will move down any gas or anything that is lighter always rises up and the heavier substances or heavier gases always move down the third one is the third method is displacement of water or collection of gas over water it is this method is applicable for gases which are insoluble in water these gases bubble out through water and are collected in the gas jar here you can see the properties of gases like their density and solubility hydrogen and methane are lighter and insoluble soluble in water oxygen is slightly denser and slightly soluble ammonia is lighter but soluble in water carbon dioxide hydrogen chloride chlorine and sulfur dioxide gases are denser as well as soluble in water now how to collect dry gas sample the gases that we get they may contain water droplets or the gas may be moist so the gases which are insoluble in water and contain water vapors can be dried by passing the moist gas through concentrated sulfuric acid and then collected by upper delivery method so here you can see the gas moist gas moving in and the dry gas moving out but sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid cannot be used with ammonia because ammonia and sulfuric acid may react together so instead of sulfuric acid quick lime which is calcium oxide can be used to dry ammonia gas the third drying agent is calcium chloride so water soluble gases can be dried by using calcium chloride So here we have uh, three drying agents that that can be used to dry a gas sample like we have concentrated sulfuric acid quick lime 
and calcium chloride thank you for watching please subscribe like and share and comment